and music industry veteran Sandy McKnight with Fernando Perdomo. Go get it now. Uh, it is such a cool listen. There's six songs, and I want more. But go to SandyMcKnight.com. <laughs> so, Sandy, I want more. I want more. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Well, How are you? Thank you. Um, I'm good. I'm, uh, I'm calling in from Lee, Massachusetts. I don't know if you're oh. familiar with this part of the world. No. But uh, the Berkshires is a beautiful... Ooh part of um you know it's uh not like boston it's not like that that side of massachusetts but anyway that's travel information that's a different show right well you know we we, we talk about everything and anything you know we're the epitome oh, of okay. women who talk <laughs> yeah. no, no. But, but really, well the, the fun thing about beautiful. it is that um <clears throat> for uh fernando is based out of los angeles Mm-hmm. And um, so we have this sort of East Coast, West Coast thing going on. That's Ooh. awesome. You know, and he, yeah. I love his guitar playing. I mean, you just hear that he does this like deep, like, <laughs> he, I, he just has such a, there's like nobody else's sound. Like, that's him. You know what yeah. I mean? And mm-hmm. just, I, I really, I enjoy, I enjoyed watching an Echo in the Canyon, too. That was cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's, he's such a, a distinctive uh, character. As well as being a great player, he's he's sort of uh, you he's can't fun. miss him in the movie, you know. He's no. <laughs> with he's the hat and the whole thing. And the look, he has a look. He has a look, and it goes yep. with his sound. It goes with his sound. Yes, too, I think. How did you meet him? Tell everyone how you met him. Well, it, it's interesting. I was doing um, a project um, which was attempting to capture, recapture the sound of the early 70s um mm. but the, the what they used to call soft rock mm. um like bread bands like that mm-hmm. <clears throat> and um and my brother-in-law who is a musician who had a, a good run with a band called 2020 uh back in the 80s in LA um he is married to my my sister who lives in California so um, I was out there uh, doing that record with him, and uh, we we used Fernando's uh, studio for some tracks, and that's how I met him. And then, mm-hmm. like a year later, 
uh, I went out again to do some other stuff, and I called him up, and I said, hey, you know, let's do some uh, recording and see what happens. And uh, we really clicked. I mean, it just happened that we we got three songs recorded in two days, and not even wow. full days, you know, just like, mm. you know, four-hour days. And, um, yeah, and then I sent him three more when I got back home, and he uh, recorded the drums and guitars and sent them out to me, and then I finished them here. So, um, yeah, it's it was very serendipitous. Hmm. Yeah, cool. and it's a good sound. I mean, it, it, I, I think I told you before we went live, you know, it, it has a little bit of an Elvis Costello vibe, but then like the birds, and it's got like a little bit of everything, mm-hmm. and I, it just yeah. it's catchy. As soon as you hear it, you're hooked into it, and I think that's really... Well a talent to have to be able to just hook us immediately. Well, I, I, I try to steal from the best, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> much like I your like pirate uh, guest that you're having on later, you know, mm-hmm. you want to steal from the best. <laughs> they want to be called a privateer, <laughs> not just a pirate, but a privateer. <laughs> private. but yeah, privateer. But yeah, you know, mm. so where does your music background start? I mean, because it's like, you know, I was reading that you, you have a memoir out and it's like, is it 40 years in the industry? This is the memoir, Kid 69. Is How did it all start for you? Well, um, I actually started playing in um, late 60s, uh, 1968. Mm. Um, I got my first bass guitar and I, I mm. started playing in local groups. And uh, by the 70s, I was uh, pretty good. So then I was, you know, I was playing in all kinds of different bands. Um, And uh, I got in a band called Free and Easy, which was a very, uh, well, it was a a disco band. Uh, Oh, wow. (laughs) And and I, yeah, I grew up in Brooklyn. So, you know, that makes sense. I was doing disco. Um, and you know, it was Saturday Night Fever was what it was, you know, and that's, except it was before the movie even came out. Um, and, um, then I, I started playing with, um, some other, you know, good musicians. I played with, um, a guy named Dennis Dyken, who is the drummer of the Smithereens. And, mm. uh, we had a little group together with this other guy and things just, you know, started to happen. And I got some opportunities to record. And um, I was in a couple of bands that came very close to getting record deals, but didn't didn't come together. Um, and yeah, so you know, it took me a good ten years to get <laughs> to get rolling. But hmm. uh, yeah, the, by the eighties, I was um, I was pretty busy, and um, I got to play with some very well known musicians just over the years. And then I started to get into the producing end of things um, in the studio, and I think that's um, one of my favorite things I do. And um, and I was always writing songs. I didn't get good at it until later, but <laughs> you yeah, I got to start yeah. somewhere, you know. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. So. Um, it- yeah, so yeah. it's it's all been fun stuff, and uh, you know I've been doing uh, what I enjoy, and then you know I've, I've gotten sidetracked through the years into other types of um, create, creative creative um, road side roads. Um, you know, I I wrote a, uh, a sitcom pilot. Cool. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I wrote, actually I wrote for um, a show called. Uh, top ten countdown on uh, VH1 for oh. a few few episodes of that, and <clears throat> so I got into the writing thing and I started writing uh, sketch comedy. Sweet. And um, yeah, so that, I mean, it's just been all over the place. I, just having creativity fun. Creativity is with not life. supposed to be creativity is not supposed to be boxed in, and it's like you know, if you do this over here, yeah. you can do that over there, and. It's like Nancy, she's a wildlife artist, musician, turned around and said, oh, now mm-hmm. I'm going to do videos, and now I'm going to do that. You know, it's that, that mm-hmm. show around. But I know now yeah. you've got a whole bunch of what you did in, in TV game shows. Like, what? tell me about that cool. part, TV game shows <laughs> and then soundtracks. So there was the comedy side, but then you got into that world, too. Well, um, let's see. The... Uh, I'm not sure which uh, game show you're talking about specifically. You want to remind me? 
<laughs> is this a game show? I is this a quiz? Is. This, is, this is your test your knowledge, but it's about you working yes. with different people on there and doing like the music, and then that's that's what I was I was reading somewhere that that you were involved well, in doing that kind of thing. Well, one now of I'm the things. Uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, you you can't really make these things up, but I guess you can. No. Uh, <laughs> I I do know that my music has been used on a variety of television programs, including, I'm sure, some game shows. Um, I have this uh, vast catalog of recordings now because I've been recording since the late 70s. And um, what's happening a lot these days, I got a lot of TV stuff, but I'm starting to get more movie things happening because... Uh, when a movie, you know, is a period type of movie, it takes place in the 80s, let's say, they're looking for music that was actually mm. recorded then as opposed to uh, simulating that style. And so I have tons of stuff, you know. I, I recorded a lot of songs um, that sort of had that Duran Duran kind of feeling back in the, in the mid-80s and so uh, a lot of that stuff's starting to get picked up now for movies, um, mm. and you know I continue. It's fun to be watching a show at three in the morning, you know, like uh, some rerun of some show on one of the many cable channels, and all of a sudden hear your hear your song, and not even you know you're just watching a show, and there it is. Oh, it's like being the, cool. the most fun thing was uh, I was watching the Colbert Report. Uh, back mm. when he was on uh, Comedy Central, and oh, yeah. uh, he used one of my songs, and that was really a surprise. Oh, that's well, neat. that's fun. That's, well, apparently that's, our that's, president uses a lot of songs from everybody <laughs> anytime he wants. Yeah, without permission, <laughs> well, I guess. But <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I had to say it. Sorry. <laughs> he didn't sign the form. He's got to sign the form first, you know. Mm. But, you, you, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I I just love that you've done all these different things, and then you go into writing a memoir. So tell us, Kid Sixty Nine. I like that. Tell mm-hmm. tell us every, everybody about that. I mean, that's got to be interesting. Another writing style to do. Uh, yeah, I I had never written a full length book before, um, and I had all these unique experiences in 1969 um, when I was a young lad of 15 and um, I always told stories to people, but I never wrote them down. So finally I said, well, um, uh, it's time, you know, it's 50 year anniversary last year of, of 1969 Woodstock, Mm -hmm. you know, the miracle mats, all of the stuff that happened that year. So people are very, uh, you know, nostalgic about that time. And, uh, I just wrote about my experiences, which were, like I say, uh, unique in that uh, I went to Woodstock, which is not that unique because about a half a million other people <laughs> were there too. But um, but I think I did it a little differently than than a lot of people. Uh, and I also I had my own apartment in uh, the East Village in New York, um, which is unusual when you're 15. You know, even yeah, even wow. nowadays. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, you know, I just had all these adventures, and I just thought, well, you know, it's it's telling my story, but it's also telling like a coming of age of the country in general. That was just a year where, you know, everything just started to really change mm-hmm. for the better. I think, uh, you know, I mean, Stonewall was that was that year it was the gay rights. Oh wow, um, the riot yeah, thing, yeah. and yeah, and uh, like today. Uh, you know, women's liberation movement got mm-hmm. really going in 69. So, um, yeah, so I figured I'd write about my experience in that context. Um, so my stories are largely about, you know, the revolution that was happening in that year. And, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so that was fun, and I, I put that out last summer, and the audio version is coming out very soon. Oh, sweet, cool. sweet. Now, do you want to update yeah. it? Because now you're going through a whole other revolution, aren't we all, <laughs> right now, with the way the world well, is? It's kind of crazy, but it's like history is repeating itself. 
It, it feels much like that did. Um, I was also in Chicago in 68 um, mm. for the Democratic Convention demonstrations, um, which, you know, was the famous uh, police riot. And so, yeah, a lot of that stuff is coming back around. And um, I'm happy to see the young people out there on the streets. I, I think it's a good thing mm. that they – are getting involved and they have a point of view and it's great. I agree. I agree. I think this, mm-hmm. yeah. the, you know, all the, um, it looks like the, gotta speak up. Everyone's got to stand together. Yeah. If you're quiet, like you, you, you then you've just decided mm-hmm. I'm not going to have a voice, you know, so there's different ways to do mm-hmm. things, you know, music is like right. that on this, this EP, San Fernando beat. And I love, I love the title of the EP, by the way, I think that's smart. It's, it's very smart. Um, yeah. And well, it's, I couldn't it's resist. The valley. Yeah. Yeah, I I couldn't resist Sandy and Fernando. What, what are you gonna call it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, and then you think San Fernando is out near LA, yep. you know, in in that area. Yep. So. And but, that's uh, where his studio is, also in San Fernando Valley. So. Oh, um, okay. Made total sense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The songs on here, did you kind of think, okay, I'm gonna put because to me, there's like songs about life and love and then there's or love lost and then there's some political vibes in there too so when you were writing this mm-hmm. did you go okay i'm going to do six songs or it's going to be about this or hey should i just put some songs together and, and put out an ep uh, well uh, it wasn't uh pre uh determined what it was going to be i i just i record a lot i uh mm. you know i usually am uh, in the studio doing something. So when I asked Fernando about doing something together, it wasn't really uh, a project I was thinking of. I just wanted to see how we meshed and, you know, Mm. and how it would sound. Um, And when it sounded this good, I just was like, oh, i got to do more and i got to finish this. And the shortest form that made sense was an EP. I could have done a mm. full album, but I feel like these days, uh, if you do 12 songs on an album, a lot of people miss a lot of them. You know, they don't always listen to the whole thing. And, mm. um, you know, so six songs is a nice little chunk of material that you can absorb and you know, it's always good. If you want more, there will be more. Um, in fact, I have uh, the beginnings of of the next um, installment. <laughs> oh, yay. Uh, yeah, it's going to come together. And, you know, at some point, I guess I can put them both together and turn it into a full album. But um, mm-hmm. the, the other problem for me is that I have uh, a lot of other stuff out there. Uh, including the the Wow and Flutter project I was telling you yeah. about, which is the, the 70s thing. Uh, that just came out last summer. And so, you know, it's hard. You can't promote too many things at once. It yeah. just gets to be, you know, mind-boggling. But, yeah. And, um, and you, you have know, a box the reaction, set, you know, that, that box yeah, set. I, have, I mean, uh, that's, what, 66 songs in there. That's a that's yeah. I did that about 10 years ago, and it was sort of a compilation of um, most of the the better things I had done up to that point. And um, it's, you know, I'm very proud of that, and people are still buying it. It's it's nice that, you know, I just had a sale the other day on uh, CD Baby, and so that's that's kind of fun. But uh, what I've been thinking about doing now is, uh, volume two, you know, from mm. 2010 to the present. Um, so that's another thing I'm playing around with. Uh, I just have lots of time on my hands, you know. It's, <laughs> it's it's, it just seems like it just keeps creating, you know. And the production yeah, side, you know. and I want to play another song, but I did want to ask you about the production side and producing and, yeah. you know, putting the album together. Because it's kind of like Nancy and I do this in a magazine. It's different, and you, you're – putting things together and then things change all of a sudden you go oh i got oh, an yeah. idea let's change the whole thing and it happens yep. but producing now what's it like going from the, in the you know 70s to today and producing an album uh, do you it's it, is one better than the other is one era and the tools better or not well um 
Yeah, I mean, there certainly has been a big shift in how records are made. Uh, when I started out, it was analog tape, mm. two-inch tape, or even mm -hmm. uh, one-inch tape in, in the beginning. And um, <clears throat> if you wanted to do an edit, you actually had to use a razor blade and cut the tape and, you know, yeah. slice it. And, um, yep. So there was that time, and then there was a time from like the mid eighties until, you know, 2000 or so where everything became digital and the, there were ADAT machines, they call them. And, uh, you would link up a bunch of those and you could do a lot of tracks, uh, that way. But, uh, now with the uh, pro tools and all the, uh, other, uh, programs that we use, um, you can do almost anything. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. it's amazing. Um, uh, the flexibility you have, um, and this project, I didn't have to do too much finagling because everything mm. was right there. Um, mm. I did, I did for one example, um, bring in a friend to play a, a guitar part that I heard after Fernando had done his thing. Uh, and I was in the studio mixing and I had a friend who lived nearby and I said, Hey, can you come out and just do this one little part? Um, so, you know, we could layer stuff indefinitely I and mean, I could put a whole orchestra in if I wanted. So yeah, it's, it's a new, uh, a new world in recording and a lot of people record out of their homes. Um, mm. and that's, you know, has certain advantages and certain limitations. Um, mm. but yeah, it's a new, it's a new producing world out there, music production. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Now, Single Flowers, I wanted to talk about that song mm. because I think mm -hmm. I love the lyrics. I love the lyrics in oh. Single Flowers. They're fun. <laughs> Thank you. And that just makes I, <laughs> they're, well, they're fun. <laughs> so, so do you mind if we play that and, and then we can have a chat about it? Because it's, I, I just, the, I don't know, I have a thing about the lyrics of this song. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I, I can't allow you to play that one. No, go yeah. ahead, of course. Oh right. my God, that's it! No wine for us tonight. No music for us tonight. What the hell? That's it. I'm kicking myself off of our own show. All right, here it is, everybody. Single flowers, and uh, go San Fernando Beat. Go to sandymcknight.com. So here it is. It's fun. Single flowers last for hours Signal towers gone so far Simple creatures grow strange features No one tells them they can't survive as they are
You're listening to Big Ben Radio with Nancy and Lisa, and that was Single Flowers from the new EP, San Fernando Beat, and that's by Sandy McKnight and also Fernando Perdomo. And there's, I, I want to make a, I don't make videos. Nancy does that, but I want to do like a, like a, like a, like a, like the like creature from the Black Lagoon kind of, not, you know what I mean, Day of the Triffids kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Not like a mm-hmm. horror thing, but I see like some really quirky animation going on with that like because it's got that right. old 60s you know what i mean i'm weird sorry but it's because well, it's it, it, same it, features that's the the line that gets me like i'm like oh that's that's odd so well, the whole yeah. thing's kind of odd but i i think uh i think you uh ought to do that and uh <laughs> i'll let you know I if think, i can learn how to know, do it I yeah. think you should do it, and I will post it on my website, and uh, we'll see what kind of reaction we get. Nancy, you're going to oh, do I'll it. Do you're something. the video person. Sure. Yeah, I'll you do, do that. <laughs> That'd be She's so cool. She always I'm puts down. in her videos, yeah. there's always something weird. If there's like yeah, a, yeah, really? I don't know. She she does yeah. odd stuff. check it out. Mm. She does weird. It's, it's supposed to be all pretty, and there's a nice park, and then something weird will happen, and it's only <laughs> certain people pick it up. Because it doesn't look like anything, you know, unusual, but some mm-hmm. people, you know, like there'll be a photo of a cat and the cat is, it's not a video, <laughs> it's a photo of a cat and all of a sudden it like meows at you or growls at you, but it, and it makes, you know what I mean? There's just these weird little... Surrealism. Yeah. 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 It's, it's mm-hmm. interesting. When but you single leave flowers. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you run flowers. with it. Okay. Yeah. If I have permission, I'll make a video. Because sure. there Uh-oh. is no video of that song yet. Uh, the only okay. two songs there. Um, there's a video of um, uh, any time of day, mm-hmm. and uh, I, like I, I think Chloe's Gone has a video possibly. So yeah, if you want to run with that, go go to it. I'm sure you uh, will come up with many creative ideas that I would never <laughs> imagine. <laughs> I want to know what features she puts in there. The growing, the, you know. Yeah, really. The, the, <laughs> I don't you know. Never it's, know. A, it's a visual thing, you know. But I this is yeah. it's a really interesting collection of songs to me, you know. So now there's heart in your hand, and it's like, oh man, that's that's a just even the title is powerful. It's like you mm. could just, yeah, that's you could be the heart or something else, and that could hurt. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yes, depends on what's in your hand, which is a whole other issue. That's, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that one I kind of had fun with. Uh, it sort of has a psychedelic kind of flavor, um, and I really that's one I really handed to Fernando and said, you know, go wild, use your imagination. He's a big uh, Beatles fan, as am I, of course, mm. and uh, so we we kind of. Did a little homage there to uh, to the Beatles. Uh, Fernando mm-hmm. actually went to Abbey Road last year and, and recorded there, which was oh, wow. cool. Yeah, a lifelong awesome. dream of his. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <clears throat> so yeah, we we w- I tried to mix it up a little bit stylistically. You know, uh, I noticed a lot of records uh, from bands uh, will have you know ten songs that kind of sound similar. And uh, it's fine if you like that sound, but um, I like to mix it up a little bit, give people mm-hmm. different flavors, much as the Beatles did, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that was they were always uh, eclectic, and I, I try to do that. But, um, you know, within a, a certain range or theme, because I have other records that are um, acoustic, uh number of records that have um, orchestration on them so it's you know uh, i'll send you my collection of um, 800 recordings and uh... <laughs> <laughs> just one little link on dropbox Woo-hoo! right it, 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 yeah, well, it's, it, yeah. it's it is interesting especially going through you know the eras i think you're also carrying the torch of sound you know of um so mm-hmm. people think back to some of the, you know, the music of the past and keeping in the future because you're still creating it in the now. So it's kind of a cool blend. I said blend. I get ten points in a glass it. of wine. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Oh really? Hey, why blend, not? Blend, but blend, 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 blend. I know. Ding, 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 everybody. <laughs> 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 what, what, what? Who do you listen to of to 
day that's you know current wise like who do you listen current. to current um, yeah <clears throat> i don't know that i listen to anyone currently um i i don't hear a lot that i'm like oh that's new and different hmm. i guess um I don't know. That's a tough question. I get compared to Elvis Costello a lot. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. that's interesting because I don't really listen to Elvis Costello that much. Um, But (laughs) I think we're around the same age and have the same influences. And so I think, uh, uh, you know, he and Joe Jackson and a few other people from that era, Graham Parker, um, Mm. probably, you know, all have the same basic foundation of, of music uh, influences. Um, I'm ashamed to say I, I really don't know too much about current uh, bands. It's not really well, ashamed, I think, but... <laughs> you know, we, you know, well, we, we learn about new musicians over, you know, uh, uh, on our show. You know, we're, we're lucky that way. And it's sure. us, like, mm-hmm. you end up listening more to, there's like, you know, Oh, here's your Facebook challenge of ten <laughs> albums. It's like that's impossible, right? But there's this, this <clears throat> whole thing now. It's all the independent musicians mean, yeah, so much more than what you're seeing on mainstream TV. You know the the, the yes, you're, you know what I mean. There's just the independence. I think I just remember people like, oh, there's no good music out there, and I'm like, well, the radio well, stations are still it. playing Hotel California on repeat, and I I don't uh-huh. need to knock the song. It's not their fault. Um, yeah. but it's, it's, I feel like there's this independent wave of really good music out there and it's not easy for the independents mm-hmm. to get, to get, there's like competition and now look, venues are closed and it's a really yeah. hard time musically speaking, but there's good music. Well, out there. I know, th- I know there is a lot of great music still being made. I just don't have the wherewithal to you know, track it down. If somebody sends me something and I like it, you know, great. Um, but I'm not, I'm not searching for new stuff. i still have so much, um, you know, um, <clears throat> so many influences in my head already mm-hmm. that if I, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little f- afraid of getting hooked on something new, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I think the other thing for me is that, uh, even though there there are influences in my new stuff that uh, date back, you know, back to the '60s, I th- I still feel like it's a new sound. You know, it's it's fresh. It doesn't feel like some sort of rehash of, um, you know, if I may say yeah. so myself. <laughs> no, it is fresh. That's why I said it's fresh. You you have the the remnants yeah. of things that, that I always think you know. You can't. I mean, it, there's it, there's a beauty of what was written and what the Beatles did and Elvis Costello right. and all that. But I think that when someone creates something, it's like, how can you not get excited about a sound? I thought that's the one thing about Echo and the Canyon was really great. How everyone was talking mm-hmm. about that. It's like, oh, let me do something this way, and it's like some. It's like a creative yeah. spark. It gives you an idea, and then you're riffing off of that. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, I think that is. And that's, Fernando. Um, Fernando is like a, an encyclopedia of music. So he brings in, you know, more of the current influences into our project. Um, mm-hmm. And so I pretty much, I hand it to him, you know, to, okay, you know, do what you feel would be cool with mm-hmm. this song, you know, and, um <clears throat> You know, by by letting go of some of my own uh, ideas of my uh, production, uh, you know, the presumptions that I go in with, um, you get a better product if you're working with someone who's brilliant like he is. You know, yeah. So that that that's my strategy. I, I look for good collaborators these days. Hmm. That's that, well, that's that's that, also the smart thing in business. They always say find the the person with ideas mm-hmm. and listen to them and, and, you know, don't squish them down because that's where yeah. your next big and thing is. And sometimes your best collaborator is your mom. That's See? right. Oh, my God. Don't forget it. It. Oh, dude. Do you There's know what you just, there. 
<laughs> oh my God, you have no idea. You know what's going to happen. You know, you know, oh, I'm going to be sitting with it. this for like two weeks of that, mm-hmm. and 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 she won't let go of it, right, Nancy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I know that you're going to do the video now. Now you get you get she gets into that, you know. But I I don't know. I I love this. I love this EP so much because it's just so. I don't know. I kind of feel like we need music like this. Even, you know, there's yes. me. Um, I want to play fake. And the very first song, yeah. Facing the End of the World, I love that song. And I know it's kind of like when you think Facing the End of the World right now, we're like, we kind of feel that way um, mm-hmm. on so many levels, you know, whether it's environment or yeah. racism <clears throat> and, you know, pandemics yep. and just basic idiots. <laughs> Out there, um, <laughs> oh, and, and feel, feel that way. The basic but, idiots, not the but, not the complex you know, not, idiots. Right? No, there's yeah, the complex basic. idiots out there, but then that's that's a whole other mess. Are we talking politics now? <laughs> I'm just well. In a very me. roundabout way. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like the boil. But anyway, <laughs> but it's funny it's when you put them all together in one place and call it a house, and yeah, then they vote. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well done, yeah. you, you guys well, are you guys are based in Colorado, correct? No, no, we we truly travel full time. So yeah. um, oh, okay. We, yeah, we travel full time. So it's been a very interesting time the last few months. So um, <laughs> now we're in uh, Florence, Colorado, which is the antique capital of the mm-hmm. state and home to the Supermax uh-huh. um, prison. So we can oh. go see El Chapo and the Unabomber yeah. just down the road. Oh, great, just, great. I know. That's fun. <laughs> A fun day trip, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really beautiful out here, and the town is quaint and charming, and no, no, you know, the Unabomber's not in the mm-hmm. street or anything, so I, I have to say that, but I have to bring it up, because people are like, what are you doing there? And we were here last year, to, we're at a friend's house, and El Chapo was brought here, and when they brought him in, and carrying mm-hmm. on, like, El Chapo's coming to Florence, and I'm like, really? They were like, and, woohoo! But the internet and <laughs> cell phone coverage, everything went out. Like, yeah. right as uh-huh. when they brought him in on the helicopter, wow. like everything went they, down. And I'm like, dude, drama. That's <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you don't actually have a home base? No. no. We oh. gave it out. You just, you, <clears throat> yeah. do you have like a, a motor home or something? Or? No, no, we have a RAV4, no. and her name is Mova <laughs> Cleopatra Doppelganger. Time wow. Time. Well, fans will get that but um <laughs> no we, we really did we, we we've been on the road we've done this a lot in different countries with nancy's art we did it in mm. south africa we've done it in england and now um here it's just we're kind of gypsy like and when we decided to take on this project of documenting mm. parks and connecting the communities and the parks together it was pointless to keep going back home to tucson so we have a nine by five square like square foot storage mm. unit with nancy's artwork <laughs> and slides of Africa and everything. Well, I've got to yeah. meet you in person. That's all I can say. <laughs> we, we're we're kind of neat. Uh, we're, we're on uh, our way. Uh, oh, you are? Okay. Yeah, let me know um, when you are, and I'll I'll make sure we, we find a way to say hello in person. Oh, <clears throat> cool. yeah. Um, You're in the Berkshire. So yeah. it, it was great having you on the show tonight, and uh, I want to thank you both for coming in. Um, <laughs> thank you. And, <clears throat> um, tell tell us can, more. Come back another time. Tell us can more you about can you bring me some El wine Chapo next time? And, can uh, you bring wine some next wine time? Okay, thank sure. you. Now we're happy. So now listen. Um, <laughs> keep us posted on the next musical project. We're uh-huh. very excited about the next one. And uh, any more writing or any other creative endeavor you do, please. You know you're here. We're welcome here wherever we are in the world. Uh, so everyone, well, Sandy McKnight dot com is the website for everything so they can click through to everything you're on instagram you're on facebook twitter what's the best social media for everyone uh facebook i think is my most uh you know i keep uh, stuff up to date on there um and the website <clears throat> which uh is easy to remember sandy, Mc, sandy mcknight with a k mck mm-hmm. and ihd um dot com and you can um buy the book there you can buy the CDs, many of the CDs that uh, I've recorded through the years. And there's even a, a T-shirt with Fernando and myself. And so that's all stuff that's cool. Um, but yeah, so that that's the best way. And, and please, you know, for your listeners, feel free to send me uh, 
email or, you know, whatever it is, except for the Unabomber. Please ask him not <laughs> to send anything. Uh, <laughs> well, he, you know, he there. might want to, but, you know, he you might. never know. Just, uh, I'm worried about yeah. that. Hey, before you yeah. go, I have one question. <clears throat> I know the world yes. is kind of closed up to live music performances, but do you perform mm-hmm. live on a on a normal basis when it's not pandemic season? Uh, well, um, I try to perform um, as much as possible, um, but I like to have. I mean, I do some solo performances, but I like to have a really good uh, band behind me, and it's hard to keep a band together these days because mm. people yeah. are just you know all over the place. Um, <clears throat> but I hope to, uh, when, once all this business blows over, um, to get together with Fernando and um, a drummer and who knows who else and um, and do some live shows. In fact, we had started to plan that when, when everything came down. So mm. um, hopefully we can get that to happen again, uh, maybe in the fall or sometime when, Music returns to the live uh, venues. Mm. Okay, okay, can well, I ask a question, really quick? Yes. Are you yes. really a mother. lion tamer? Are you a lion tamer? <laughs> um, well, I'm going to blame my publicist for that one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the truth is, um, I often uh, add humorous uh, occupations to my uh, bio simply okay. for entertainment purposes. Game show I occasionally, host yeah, yeah, I, I claim <laughs> to be a, a, a phlebotomist. You know, whatever it is, oh, whatever God. fun word I can I can think of or fun occupation. Well, um, I am a lion timer, so you I are. Just wanted to, yes, I wanted to. Ask. Oh, really? <laughs> She's the head cat. Uh-oh. Do you have a chair? Do you, do you have a a pith, I have, a pith I helmet have and a chair and a whip? No chair and no whip. It's no all whip. done with kindness. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Because <laughs> well. if I was going, <laughs> well, that could work out. I was hoping for the whip, but if you, you know, yeah. kindness can be good too. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. I, I would have played single flowers all over again. I am. I would have played that again. Oh, all right. <laughs> So now that we're we're all getting close to you know all the the, the real talents we have, we're going to play fake. <laughs> it's like the perfect song to play. But thank you, yeah. Sandy, for joining us. It's been a true pleasure and it's been fun. And uh, again, everyone, SandyMcKnight dot com, and it's an M C with a K at the end. So McKnight, M C K N I G H T. N I G H T, right? There it is. The Knights of the Round Table. That's yes. right. He's the knight mm-hmm. of the round table with lions and single flowers. So, <laughs> but now we're going to play fake. And so I hope your single flowers aren't fake flowers. There's nothing well, oh, nice about I'll fake send flowers. you some and you could you could find out for real. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Here it is. Thanks so much, Sandy. You take care. Thanks, we'll Sandy. see when we get to okay, Massachusetts. Okay. Thank you for having me. All right. Take it's care. Fun. Yeah, I know. Bye. Here it is, everyone. <laughs> Fake from again the EP San Fernando Beat and go to sandymcknight.com. <laughs> Shit and crack and doubt is fake me in my body.